Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 68 where you email me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them here for the next hour. Here we go, let's start out with this one which is called Interesting Video. Hi, Mark. Firstly, I'd like to congratulate you for all the work you've done to wake people like myself up. I came across your Flat Earth Clues about a year ago, and now I look at the world in a completely different way. Thank you. I've attached a video that was suggested by YouTube. It talks about a company that builds microwave links, and specifically one that goes from Cyprus to Lebanon over the Mediterranean Sea. The company seems oblivious to the fact that the line of sight link cannot possibly work over the distance stated, which is 164 miles. That's on a ball earth, of course. Keep up the great work regards Mark Cheney and the video is titled, just so you guys know, Flat Earth, Line of Sight, Microwave, Impossible on a Globe, Unveiled Truth Mirror. So really cool, thank you for that. This one's called Building a Rocket to Mars and YouTube with a Dome Reference. Mark, the ad played before Q&A 62. Within the first 15 seconds, she points at a two dome structure two dome structures then proceeds to talk about building a rocket to mars thank you chase very welcome chase this one's called earth's motion mark i heard you read my incredibly long email yesterday <laughs> cool <laughs> i've been racking my brain on motion the last couple of days possibly i'm onto something as soon as i can figure out a way to explain it i'll send it over scott well i'm looking forward to it scott but try not to make it as long as your last one this one's called, hi, <laughs> lowercase. Mark, please, I'd like further communication to be by my mail for security reasons, okay? As you know, we are on a mission. Intend to brief you in details. Okay, problem with this email is it was blind copied to a whole bunch of other people's, I think. Wait a minute, was it only blind copied to me on whatever? His name's Foster. Foster, just send me the info. Don't tell me, uh, you know, for security reasons. Uh, my email is about as safe as anyone. And besides, what other what other communication are you going to use? Phone? Are you going to, you know, pen pal me? Write me out something in longhand? No, just send it to me. This one's called YouTube Changes. Mark, I'm wondering if you or any of your followers have noticed a change to YouTube splash page content. By splash page, I mean the initial page viewed when you browse on YouTube. I have viewed a lot of Flat Earth videos for the last 18 months. So much, in fact, that my splash page contained almost exclusively Flat Earth content. Just in the last week or so, I have noticed very few FE videos and more debunker views, de videos being prevent, pre, blah, 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 presented. Sorry, guys. I just got off the treadmill. Sunday is treadmill day. I'm wondering if YouTube has changed their algorithm to accomplish this. Stay flat, Jay Davis, on a flat earth desert island to in northeast Indiana. Frowny face. The, uh, yeah, I have noticed a few things. I mean, they haven't stat squished this entirely. If you, you know, if you're looking up flat earth and you sort by upload date, right, today's is like 20.2 million, which is fantastic. Again, we're, we're slowly gaining, I don't know if we'll have to catch him, uh, Donald Trunk, uh, Trunk. Donald Trump, who's at 22.1. So, yeah, I mean, I've noticed a few things. I mean, somebody, it wasn't YouTube, somebody reported my Flat Earth Clues director's cut as hate speech, which I was, I'm, I'm appealing. It's like, I don't know where you can even come up with that. Like I'm trying to incite a riot or anything. Maybe I am. All right, let's go on. This one's called Survival Guide. Mark, please send me your free survival guide. Thanks, Steve. And yeah, if anyone wants a free survival guide called Empty Shelves, it's only about two megs. I'll send it to you in PDF format. All you have to do is email me and just put it in the title somewhere. Mark wants survival guide. And if you put it at the bottom of the letter, I'm, I'm not going to smack you, but I probably won't get to it till I read this email. But if I see survival guide literally pop up on my, my machine, it's like, okay, well, I'll just sh shoot it off right then and there. I've sent survival guides to people like 30 seconds after they've they've giving me the email this one's called spreading the word uh nope nope that's a uh back and forth email this one's called new york meetup and somebody sent me a link to what happened at the new york meetup thank you if you guys want to send me any videos i'd love to watch them whatever meetups are out there and again if you're going to do your own meetup and you want me to promote it just send me the details where it's going to be, who the contacts information is going to be, and I'll fill it in with generic pictures of that city or state. 
with some catchy music and you guys can have fun. This one's called Easy Question. Hi, Mark. Is the number 23 in your email, does it have any special meaning? Like 23 in the Illuminati. That's from Christopher Brown. God bless. No. And in fact, I didn't even know. It wasn't until after I got, I've, I've had that meal. Wow. I've had this email for, I think like 23 years. Uh, so 23, let's say 23, let's say 24 years. Uh, that was randomly chosen to, for me by Comcast because I just wanted M. Sargent, you know, Mark Sargent. That, that was my initial thing. But like anyone knows, it, especially because of the military, M. Sargent was chosen like that. And so the closest I could get was 23. And they just picked it for me and said, okay. And that's the only email I have ever really used except for corporate emails. Uh, since I've since I've had emails, I had an AOL address back in the, back in the AOL days when I worked as a forum consultant for AOL. But after that, once I got on Comcast, I just kept it. It was pretty fun, and it's it's good to have a consistent thing out there. So no matter how old your your videos get, the email still stays. Same thing with the phone number. I took the phone number with me from Colorado to Washington because I wanted to make sure it was still valid. And uh, uh, I had a phone number through Comcast as well. And they said, the only way you can take it is you get a transfer. It was a landline. Transfer it to a cell phone and then drive it with you up to Washington. So anyway, nope. Nope. It has nothing to do with, with anything. And I think the Jim Carrey movie 23 came out after I had it. That was the first time I even knew that 23 was a thing. Didn't see it in the theater. Caught it on video later. Moving on. This one's called 100% Proof. Mark, having just listed listed <laughs> spell checker guys listened to q a show 62 i've come across indisputable proof please reply with your credit card details <laughs> lol rob that's funny yeah yeah people kill me uh this one's called don't have to read on air Okay, well, I don't have to, but I'm going to. Hello, Mark. I wrote you on January 2nd. We were excited that you read our email on air later that month. Flat Earth Q&A emails number 57. I know you're really busy, so I'll make it quick. I re requested your survival guide, but we haven't received it yet. Could you please send it again? Thank you, Janice. And I hopefully did send it to you. Uh, Janice, if you haven't gotten it yet, please email me. It looks like I replied. So hopefully I send it to you. And this next one, funny enough, is called Survival Guide. Mark, great work. That's from Lerac. And yep, he gets a Survival Guide too. This one's called Longtime Listener Watcher Submarine Southern. Hi, Mark. Just wanted to reach out because I want to contribute to your awesome work. I love all your shows and your interviews with subject matter experts. I've been a flat earther since September of 2017. Haven't looked back since. Anyway, I recently listened to your Strange World show with the Navy Submariner in it. I too was in the U.S. Navy Submarine Service. I was a radio man on the USS Toledo Fast Attack Sub from 2001 to 2006. I also currently work for the Department of the Navy as a submarine Q&A inspector. So I guess you could consider me an SME too. See what he did there? He put SME. That's a TLA, if you don't know what that is. During your show, I was asked if anyone knew about any subs that had traveled down to the Southern Hemisphere. Well, I had the pleasure of doing this in my 2004 deployment. We were in the Gulf of Oman getting ready to head back through the Suez Canal when we got a message saying that it wasn't safe for vessels to navigate the canal because they were taking fire from RPGs. We were surfaced to do a swim call when we got the news, so the captain let anyone who wasn't on watch stay on top to enjoy the sunset because we wouldn't be seeing it again for over two months. <laughs> ah, submarine life. How fun. Uh, the transit... Actually, I would probably like... <coughs> uh, the transit home would take us down and around Cape Hope and then back up to the northern Atlantic to head home. Our spherical sonar array, the one on the front of the sub, was not operational either, so we had to rely on our hull and towed arrays. We never ran into the issues that I made aware of while navigating around the Cape, but the journey did take a very long time. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know that there has been a sub down in the Southern Hemisphere, and I never had any issues. We were told that this was something that no sub has done in a very long time, which is understandable because of the Suez Canal. I've attached a few photos to me uh, of me in the Red Sea and also me enjoying the sunset in the Gulf of Oman. Please feel free to use this information and photos on your shows. I also wanted to provide you with a new curvature app I just heard about via the Potter's Clay. Pretty funny stuff. Apparently this app is supposed to prove the Earth isn't flat, but it actually just reinforces that it is not a globe. Well played, globe enthusiasts. 
Well played. Why does Flat Earth continue to grow? Evidence. Look for yourself. Curvature app. Simulation of globe Earth and the Flat Earth. I'll be sure to send you new and interesting Flat Earth information as I come across it too. I admin on several Flat Earth Facebook groups, so I've got my finger on the pulse of all the good stories. Thanks again for your time. Jason Youngblood. You're very welcome, Jason. Nice letter. This one's called Apologies. Hi, Mark. I've been an avid follower of yours for nearly three years and admire your work, though I've never posted anything on YouTube. I've been preaching a lot of flat earth to all I encounter. My first email to you has to be an apology. I've only just seen your radio interview with Russell Brand, and I am ashamed of him. <clears throat> Excuse me. He doesn't represent Britain in any shape or form. Most think he is a knob. Drinking lemonade. Uh, <clears throat> I hope to send you some more proof for you to share. I have done some extensive work regarding the views from the south coast of England and the visible coast of France, which is 22 miles away. Again, sorry for Mr. Brand. <laughs> you don't have to apologize for Russell Brand. I actually was a fan. I mean, not a huge fan, but I liked his work up until, and then, you know, his career was going to go sideways once he divorced Katy Perry. Again, sorry for Mr. Brand. Keep it the good work. Regards, Tony out of Kent, England. This one's called Modern Day OP Fishbowl, Operation Fishbowl. Hey, Mark, what do you make of those loud booms being heard all over the plain earth? Is this a modern day Operation Fish Fishbowl? Regards, Simon West. Don't have any idea. Don't have any idea. If it's an enclosed pressurized system, those noises could be anything. Could be God messing around with pots and pans in the kitchen. I don't know. This one's called Queries from Two Men in London, England, UK. Yeah, actually, just could have said London. Uh, Mark, hi. Having told a good friend today that I've recently, been, recently seen several Flat Earth YouTube videos, I've sent this email to you because I was unable to answer my friend's questions. In brief, having mentioned the Antarctic Treaty, your interviews with pilots, my good friend asked two questions. I wonder if perhaps you have any comments. One, if the earth is flat, what is the benefit of the government's persuading people that it is a globe? Why would the government do that? Uh, watch Flat Earth Clues. This, I'm not even going to explain it here. If you haven't watched Flat Earth Clues yet. Two, how, as my friend said, can you take YouTube, how can YouTubers be assured that your interviewees are not simply stooges like friends of mine providing false, fake, fictitious accounts? You didn't have to say false, fake, and fictitious. We all get it. Of their experiences as pilots, etc. Uh, I never knew any of these guys. They're calling from all over the place. It was completely unsolicited. And I don't think I could make up such a wide variety of people from the military and engineers and air traffic controllers and people that specialize in all sorts of fun stuff. If he thinks I'm lying, fine. He thinks I'm lying. Uh, although the very first one, Sean McCrary from the United States Navy, also posted him flying to his ship on the Iwo Jima and the training room for the Sparrow missile system. So at the very least, you know, he's got video documentation of him doing his stuff. Unless you don't think it's him, but it certainly matches up in my opinion. Anyway, if you have a minute or two, it'd be great to hear your thoughts and reply. Steve Baker, London SE5. Uh, P.S. Thanks, whatever your reply, or appreciate your effort you put into YouTube. Thank you, Mark, sir. You know what? I'm going to put this one in my things to do because I'm going to make sure they get the Sean McCrary video stuff where he's in the training room. And I mean, who knows? The guy may not believe it anyway. It's like, well, that doesn't prove anything. It's like, all right, just go enjoy your globe for uh, another few months till we take over. This one's called Watch Jerry Seinfeld and Brian Regan Talk About Having the Same Joke on YouTube. Hi, Mark. I hope you're having a good day. This should give you a good chuckle. The, vi the short video is about two comedians inventing the same joke involving putting a man on the moon. It's interesting that Jerry Seinfeld concludes that the world makes more sense if we have not been to the moon. Enjoy. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to watch that. Things to do pile. I'm a big comedian fan anyway. This one's called Throne of God. Hi, Mark. Would like a copy of this article. Purchased your Audible. Great stuff. Thanks for all your work. Armando Ruiz. And what he's talking about was a paper that was written by a guy who was an air traffic controller. I had a subject matter show where an air traffic controller was talking to a flight instructor. And they, he was talking about the 
the, this paper that he wrote. So if you guys want the paper, you can just say, I want paper from Guy or I want Harmony. It's called, it, on my machine, it's called Harmony. He calls it the throne of God, but literally the PDF is called Harmony. I don't know why he called that. So I will send it to you. I think it's six megs. So it'll fit in an email pretty easily. This one's called PewDiePie Video and not the new one. This one's back from February 27th. Hi, Mark. Thanks again for the book review you left for my book. I wanted to let you know about the PewDiePie video from yesterday about Flat Earth. That was the first one he did, February 27th. And he did a new one in uh, just a couple days ago with me on the thumbnail and Patricia. I want to let you know about PewDiePie's video from yesterday about Flat Earth. I also made a video breaking down of the info about it. Here's the link to my YouTube video. Feel free to share this however you see fit. Thanks again, Mark, for all your hard work. Chad Taylor. Awesome, Chad. And I'm pretty sure I saw a commercial for your book, one of those uh, YouTube video ads. That was kind of fun. This one's called Sri Yantra. S-R-I Siri... Y-A-N-T-R-A. Mark, do you think there's a connection between the SRI Yantra and knowledge of Flat Earth Dome? I have no idea. I have never seen that word before in my life. Unless there's a different translation for it. Never seen it. But I will look into it. This one's called Flat Earth AE Question. Hey, Mark, my brother and I have been researching the Flat Earth for a few months now and have come to believe that the AE map doesn't make sense when it comes to the sun being visible at different parts of the world at the same time. We saw a video by a guy named Flat Earth Asshole where he showed it clearly enough. Have you seen the video and how do you explain it? By the way, we love the clues you made. Thanks, Zach. Uh, yeah, FEA, I don't know why <clears throat> he's going against Flat Earth right now, but... Uh, if you have any questions about the sun, just type in YouTube, Flat Earth Sun. Some wonderful videos by DITRH and Zeteticism.com and My Perspective. There's all sorts, sorts of great videos out there. Uh, I, I wouldn't be able to do it justice here. This one is called uh, More Flat Earth Proof. Mark, I thought I would share with you a recent discovery. When pulling up Google Earth, you can add live cloud data. When you go have a look down south, you'll see a mysterious triangular dead spot around three edges. You get three cloud images that really don't look like they belong in the same part of the world. I think this will give you hours of entertainment trying to seriously catch it out. Attaches a snap of today's. <laughs> Thanks for all the quality content. Once again, regards, Richard. Very welcome, Richard. This one's called Hot Wires Solar Interference SVC Interruption Scam Letter. All right. Uh, hi, Mark. I'm Mia, the lady who did the <clears throat> excuse me, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes spoof with Trump last year. Thanks for your nice comments. By the way, I received this letter from Hotwire Communications, who supplies our area with internet and TV, warning about service interruptions due to satellites, the sun, and orbits. I don't know what they are planning. Mass spraying of the sky, perhaps? So weird. I hope you can disseminate this letter to others who know it's 100% BS and we can figure out their plan here. Hmm. Interesting. This one's called, I believe. Hi, Mark, you are very clear. I have only comment, commenced research in the last two weeks. I have assessed Flat Earth from an open-minded perspective and only wish to be convinced by material proof and not embroiled in empirical theory. The weight of credible evidence to support Flat Earth significantly outweighs the bluff and misdirection and globe theory. I believe the Earth is stationary, flat, and has a covering as identified within the Holy Bible. Pete. <laughs> That's a very clinical look at it, Pete. And thank you for the well-written email. This one's called Firmament Video. Mark, I just watched your video on the Firmament and Admiral Bird. My question is, what do you think is beyond the Firmament? I think it's an unlimited universe. What do you think? Well, unlimited in terms of potential, not space, is what I'm getting at. What do you think the Firmament is made up of? Jello. No, it's not Jello. Uh, take your pick. The dealer's choice on that one. Electromagnetic frequencies, heavy elements, heavy, heavy water, uh, some sort of force field. I don't know. Unified field. Take your pick. This is a very interesting topic for me as I'm just learning or relearning everything that I've been taught over my 43 years. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks for your time. Thad Jenkins. Very welcome, Thad. This one's from Christopher Brown. And it's an Illuminati card with a modified Flat Earthers uh, card in it. And it says, the Flat Earthers are immune to any attack from media. Any personalities linked to Flat Earthers lose two power. If Flat Earthers is destroyed, it is returned to your hand. When attacking with Flat Earth, roll a dice. Flat Earthers power is equal to number rolled minus the number of violent groups under your control. Interesting. 
And if anyone plays card games, well, I mean, if you ever played Pokemon, you, you kind of get what we're talking. Of course, Pokemon was just a ripoff of the Holy of Holies, Magic the Gathering. Look it up if you ever want to play the best card game ever, ever made. Loved playing that in the 90s. This one's called Watched Your Video, Got a Question. Mark, great videos and clues. Thanks for opening my eyes. I got a sick feeling after I stopped laughing. Couldn't believe I was duped all these years. I found a lot of scripture that support the flat earth and helped to convince me as well. I was driving home from work one day and I always seen these hot air balloons going up. They will hover there for three to four hours, then come down pretty much in the same spot. Then it dawned on me. If the earth is spinning a thousand miles an hour, why aren't they three to 4,000 miles away? Have you ever thought of that? Yes, I have. And a lot of other people have too. Thanks, Mark Martinez. And he left his phone number. That's nice. This one's called Help Mark Sargent. Does that mean help? I should help or help Mark Sargent? Uh, Mark, I was wondering if you knew anyone in my state, which is New Jersey, that is also a flat A. There's all sorts of people all over the place. I've had no luck. Seems like I'm all alone. Everybody says that in this shithole of a state. <laughs> LOL. Please let me know anyone from my area. Give them my email, which is... Okay, you know what? I'm going to give it out. Anyone from Jersey, you want to get a hold of another flat earth guy who is super anxious to meet people he's got he's got an email called yup it's flat at gmail.com that's yup y-u-p it's flat at gmail.com keep up the good word mark thanks michael very welcome michael and oh no there's there's people in fact there was a new jersey meetup not that long ago come on man just type in if you want to know just type in flat earth meetup into youtube and you'll see all the fun meetups that have been out there and there's been a ton of cities i i couldn't i couldn't even rattle them off if i wanted to right now this one's called New to Flat Earth Stuff Read. Hello, Mark. So yes, I'm new to this Flat Earth Stuff. I started about 45 days ago. What is this Flat Earth Stuff? So I started, I thought this was just funny stuff. A few people being nonconformists. The last week, I stumbled across your clues seven or six and thought this is great. Very good. There must be more. Number one, etc. You have done a fantastic job explaining some of the stuff. Others do not know how to address and others, oh my God no clue and just awful so who am i and why do i get it well i am among other things an aircraft quality engineer currently working on landing gear uh 737 and triple seven i have built inspected faa certified over 700 ga aircraft Lancair, columbia aircraft cessna so yes i have a clue and have seen earth up to 42,000 feet flown across the u.s uh, north south east west flat and level i know avionics gyroscopes don't lie it was a hmm moment when I started this journey. The moon, well done. Knew this in the early 80s and have accepted it. We all, well, some of us understand why. This leads me to the ISS. I worked with another engineer at Cessna who was a design and build engineer at NASA. He helped develop the ISS waste system. Dave hinted, it's nice that you actually gave his name. Dave hinted how the waste system was still in the building they built it in. And this was about 2006, 2007. I never really got his hints. I complete what he's saying is they NASA builds all sorts of crap and it never gets put anywhere. I completely understand now with a bit, a bit of simple Google searches I never thought of doing before. So I must state, I am not sure I agree with some of the flatter society ideas and thoughts. Maybe it's just a few out of touch individuals. Conversation about these subjects is great. We need more of it. Keep up the good work and don't change. Now listening to the live show recorded as time allows a level headed individual is needed here in this space. And his name is Sean. I'm not going to get his last name because I'm not sure if he actually wants me to get his last name. But yeah, very interesting. There you go. Tech guy who also knows NASA people and the NASA guy he knows says, yeah, the ISS waste system still sitting in a building somewhere. Why? It's because a toilet in zero G would be horrifyingly bad. Oh my God. You'd have to have a separate pressurized room just for it. It'd be awful. This one's called, what? No, I don't know what that is. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Call for indirect fire, PDF. Call for indirect fire, no, doesn't use any Coriolis effect. That's from Joseph Moreno. Thank you, Joseph. This one's, yeah, of course. And, and none, none of the subject matter experts I've ever spoken to have said that the Coriolis effect is real. They all say the same thing. They fire at 30 miles, 50 miles and more and they say the spinning of the earth never calculated in the firing solution 
This one's called Flat Earth Help. Mark, great work. Loved all your videos. I see all your points. I see the world differently now. However, something new just came up and I'm unable to explain it in any way. How do the stars rotate in the opposite direction in the south? For the life of me, and I'm somewhat of a scientist, I cannot get that to work on a flat earth. Sure you can. It's multiple projection systems. We've been doing it in software for, oh lord, t pushing 20 years. Uh, you absolutely can do it. I mean, play it. it's in Warcraft. My Warcraft account is still alive. I, I see multiple projections all the time. It's based on instancing. It's not hard to do, but again, if you don't play, if you don't deal in any sort of virtual worlds or virtual projection systems, you probably wouldn't get it right away because you haven't seen it. I hope you don't mind. I will try calling the listed number if you do not get a, if I do not get a response to this email as the South Pole star and star directions threw me off course completely. And he's calling from way overseas because I think it's 96 country code. So I don't know where that is. This one's called Flat Earther from Ottawa, Canada. Hi, Mark. I've been awake since my research on 9-11, seeing so many inconsistencies and in what happened that day really woke me up. I will say, though, that it does take me quite a bit of evidence to veer me towards believing or researching deeper into a certain subject that I find BS. No, I do not believe we went to the moon. And frankly, I do not believe much of anything that I see that is being indoctrinated or forced to believe in certain matters. I did open some minds, and yet all I did was tell them to research and check things out for themselves. So with that, I am a Flat Earth believer since July of 2017. And let me tell you, I laughed at and ridiculed constantly, but I'm all good with it. I don't preach anything like the Flat Earth. I just talk about what I believe to be true. I appreciate the work that you do and think you're on top and information in specifics on Flat Earth. Thanks for that. I heard that you'll be in Ottawa, Ontario in August of 2018, and I do not want to miss the opportunity to attend. Can you please keep me informed on the specifics of the conference and the exact date? Thanks for taking time to read my email. I do appreciate your work and keep it up. That's from Stephen Renaud just a regular guy. And yeah, what he's talking about is the Flat Earth Conference Canada, Canadian conference, which is going to be happening in Edmonton. So I will, and all you have to do is go to fe2018.com slash Canada. And if you're from the States, make sure you have your passport. If you're in Canada, well, just head on over. This one's called Flat Earth, Flat Earth Fiction and Faith. Hey, Mark, I just want to thank you for your making uh, the Flat Earth Clues. I was completely, it was completely enlightening. I have a couple of questions I hope you can answer for me. First, research. I want to become a, an expert as fast as possible. I basically want my headspace to be where you're at. This is all so cool to me. How would you recommend going about my research as efficiently as possible? There's a lot of information out there, and I just want to make sure I'm learning every rebuttal in the book. The second is flat earth fiction. Are there any notable examples of flat earth fiction you know of? Not, I mean, there's some out there, not a ton that you can point to, both for entertainment and information. I have my heart set on writing a fictional story script, and I think I can make a really dope story, but it was you who said the first rule of Flat Club is not to talk about it. Keep it to myself. Well, you know, not now. You can, the, the first rule of Flat Club is starting to break down because there's all sorts of people talking about it. But then again, that's the whole point of Flat Club. And, and Fight Club is like, you're not supposed to talk about it, but everybody does. Third, dreams. Ooh, do you think they hold any purpose beyond subconscious organization? I had two dreams related to flat earths and societies that have, have me believing that there's more to REM sleep than just sleep. Want to tell you, conscience is telling me I shouldn't. Are you a mysticism third eye sort of guy? I'm not telling. Finally, Faith, you talked about proof radically changing the world because knowing we're being watched, we're now held accountable. But isn't that opening a can of worms? Doing away with faith won't humanity to a degree only unite in world peace from a point of discovering proof because they know they're being observed. Won't it change the motivations and the honest, honesty behind the day-to-day -day kindness we show each other? Thanks for entertaining this long email. That wasn't that long. I'm excited. Uh, I can show you some long emails. I'm excited about doing the right, doing, wow. I'm excited about doing right by the Flat Earth community and I can't wait for your response. You're a hero, really a hero? I don't know about that. Thank you. He signs it Morpheus. Awesome. This one's called, hey, we finally made it into March. Go figure. Uh, I just keep falling behind. 
Uh, Hello, Mark. I've listened to your interviews, and I feel they're the best evidence for someone open to the argument. One of the most eye-opening problems I've discovered that you may or not have discussed on your show is the curve over longer distances. I've flown from Boston to San Francisco recently, and it's obviously a smooth, seemingly level flight. Little did I realize we somehow climbed or dove over 1,100 miles of vertical curve. I don't really know how the perspective works for this supposed curve, whether you'd be climbing or diving, but when you think about the airplane altitude only reaching about 6 miles, 1,100 miles sounds a bit ridiculous, or a lot ridiculous. That's from Gregory Merchant House. Cool. Thanks, Gregory. This one's called Flat Earth Evidence Through Yacht Racing. Ooh. Hi, Mark. I have some compelling evidence of Flat Earth through analysis of yacht racing times and records. If you're interested, I am interested. It is really crazy how yachts travel so much faster up in the north despite only having a fraction of the wind. At the beginning of 2014, I had some time on my hands, so I started looking into FE. Blew my mind, to say the least. Recently, I've been having some long email ping pong with someone at my church who does not fancy the idea of Flat Earth and fancies himself as a bit of an intellectual. He brought up the solo, Fedor Kornyukov completing Antarctica Cup ocean race as a problem I would not be able to dispute, being how it is circumnavigation of Antarctica and would not be feasible on the flat earth. This leads to comparisons between North and Southern Hemisphere yacht races and times and a discovery of a huge imbalance between how fast a yacht travels relative to the wind in the North and the South of the order of 110% wind speed in the north versus, that's interesting, I would not heard that, versus 20% of wind speed in this particular area. This is, however, not isolated. All southern hemisphere races suffer the same ills to some degree or another, while all northern hemisphere races seem to be immune. If you're interested, get in contact. That's from Clive. Hmm. I had not heard that. That's very interesting. I'll get a hold of this guy. This one's called Supersonic and Survival Guild. Because, you remember, spell checker also affects the titles of the emails. It's supposed to be Survival Guide. But I'll take Survival Guild because I actually have a guild in Warcraft. And it's called, guess what? It's called Flat Earth. Dear Mark, please don't... I didn't come up with it. Somebody else did it and then made me guild leader. Uh, Dear Mark, please don't read out the words in brackets. Don't read the words. Oh, because they're swear words. Okay, I won't read the, the curse words. I, I rarely do anyway. I catch it. I've been listening to Strange World call-in shows and mailbag for about 18 months. I email you about two months ago around Christmas of 2017 with a truly genius idea, but I have yet to hear you read it on air. You know what? I'm going to read it. My genius idea is similar to flash mobbing, but with a twist, namely on mass for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks on end. We should try to book Neil deGrasse, Tyson, Bill Nye, and Crying Box. Crying Box? (laughs) Brian Cox, that's your name for him, is Crying Box? (laughs) Through their agents for anything and everything. If this action could be coordinated correctly, it would prevent any of their agents from being contacted by any other person other than Flat Earth people trying to book the three form, three three form mentioned three whatever complete idiots weapons clowns thus forced the agent to drop these three muppets forthwith at with much haste also i can't think of a reason why but i'm sure concord must have mothballed for some fake globe reason what are your thoughts on this uh i wouldn't worry about the the, the big three neil degrasse tyson bill nye and and brian cox i wouldn't worry about those guys uh please send me your survival guild he did it again survival guild so i know you have read this email kind regards uh without ill will vexation or frivolity (laughs) simon bibby he didn't even sign that he said simon of the bibby family he should have said simon of bibby it would have been more medieval and as far as the concord nah i mean the concord was really really fast but remember we can break we get we can do commercial airlines that that can break the sound barrier but you can't because it's noise pollution i mean it's they're super noisy nobody wants to hear sonic booms all freaking day in any flight path and you'd hear sonic in some parts of the united states you like the hubs like atlanta or dc or new york you'd um you'd hear sonic booms coming in all the time that would be really annoying. Plus, it scares animals and stuff. Got to be nice to the animals. This one's called Flat Earth, Not a Troll. Okay. Hey, Mark, I saw your Flat Earth clues a year ago, and that, for me, started. Period. 
I consider myself an expert at this point. I came across your TFR YouTube videos and then got YouTube read. Really? So I could listen to them while flying. I did not know you could listen to uh, stuff with YouTube read while you were flying. You know what? doesn't surprise me. I fly one or two times a week for work, and I have become the crazy guy who pitches the idea to anyone who will listen on the plane. Oh my god! So you're fly, you're basically in a plane half of your life, and you're you're like looking at the person next to you. It's like, hey man, you heard about flat Earth? It's like they can't get away from you. I am writing you because I spoke with the veterans of Southwest Airlines. Oh really? You're talking to pilots too? Pilot, and I asked him. If he ever in his entire career knew of a one-way flight from Australia to South Africa without going into the Northern Hemisphere, and he thought for a moment and said, no, I hope to call into your show on Tuesdays and provide some interesting perspective. You're awesome, Aaron Thomas. Oh, that's nice, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you for that. And he lists his phone number and says, call me anytime. I have so, I, I do not have much time for phone calls. I mean, I, I have to screen pretty much all my calls now. Because I, I get so many, I get voicemails in the middle of the night. That's the part that kills me. I'm sleeping and I can see the phones lighting up, lighting up. I should turn off the phone. Uh, but it, anyway, this one's called Dr. Steve Brule, Flat Earth Must Watch. Mark, I promise I'm not a troll, but this video debunks Flat Earth. Just kidding. Must watch this Dr. Mocking Space. Okay, I'm going to click on the video. It's a YouTube video, Dr. Steve Brule Investigates Space, Flat Earth Debunked. It's from Subtle, it looks like it's a mirror from Subtle Infinity. So, cool. This one's called, Huge Fan, thanks for all your work, please read. Hi Mark, love the work you've done towards Flat Earth, I've been on board about three months. Working in the pool industry, I've realized in front of me every single day, water is flat in a glass, on a swimming pool, and also lakes and oceans. Anyhow, any chance you could send me some of the pictures that make up the slideshow during your Strange World episodes on YouTube, would much appreciate it, thanks. And yes, if anyone wants all those pictures, I have to send it through WeTransfer, because I think it's uh, a couple hundred megs, but I will send it through WeTransfer, that way it doesn't cl clog up the email, because e email caps out at like 25 megs. This one's called, take a look at this guy. Hello, Mark. I'm Thomas from Sweden in Europe. I know where Sweden is, man, but that's okay. That's right. And I'm one of your listeners out there. I'm going through the whole series of Strange World and enjoy it a lot. I became a flat earther about a year ago and having a hard time thinking it can be anything else. Anyway, I wanted to get your take on a guy I found on the tube that has made a mission of trying to disprove the flat earth. Good luck. <laughs> you might know him. He goes by the name Greater Sapien. Ah, yeah, that guy. He's actually the, the current, one of the current ranking demunkers guys out there, one of the bigger channels. And this guy is what you sometimes say not easy to make up. He has an intro from Shogun Assassin from 1981. Yeah, that's cool. And I know you and Jonathan are movie bus buffs. He stares boldly into the camera and the whole thing screams ego more than anything. If you look through his videos, he seems serious, but when you look at the things he's debunked, it's many times straw man arguments. The best one so far, I think, is when he claims that the curvature is 8 inches per mile and uses that logic to dis disprove air flight corrections over a distance of 14 miles. What do you think? Uh, do you know of this guy? Keep up the great work and have a great cookie day. Best regards, Thomas. Yeah, Thomas, I, I've seen some of his stuff, but I really don't pay much attention to debunkers anymore because they're... Uh, I'm glad he uses, well, I don't think, I don't know if he uses his real name. Most of them don't even use their real name. And so it's all right, well, you're going to lose because there's a lot of our people, you know, we're going to conferences and meetups and we're using our real name. We're telling people where we live. I mean, I literally put my address, my phone number, my real name, uh, just about everything, my middle name, everything out there. You can look me up. I'm, I'm pretty much an open book. So when it comes to debunkers, most of them are just you know, voices yelling from the dark throwing rocks from the dark uh, like, do what you want but unless you actually step forward into the light and be seen uh, you're, you're not going to win not that you could win against us anyway we're, we're pretty much a juggernaut at this point this one's called gravity is not a reality hi mark sergeant my name is thomas i accidentally stumbled upon your youtube videos regarding flat earth i became very intrigued over the last week I'm a huge fan of how you present this case and how you handle any confrontation. Keep up the good work. I became awakened to the government BS story of 9-11 World Trade Center building falling at free fall speeds with no real reasoning behind it except for the fire in the adjacent buildings so called weakening the structural integrity of, of building 7. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Building 7. Oh, my God. 
greedy people. But no, other buildings around the Twin Towers were reported to have fallen. But I'm crazy, of course, for thinking that according to popular belief on the real point of why I'm emailing you. Gravity, the, the supposed force in which everything is held to the earth, or so we are told about this theory unproven, that's why it's still a theory. Anyways, in the southern hemisphere, on this supposed globe, we live on gravity. Is a selective force? Meaning we would all agree that a body of water weighs more than a bird, but yet in the southern hemisphere, a bird is able to fly on this supposed globe, but yet the oceans and other bodies of water don't fly off into the air. So a bird with less weight than the body of a water is trying to defy the theory of gravity, but water cannot. So if we assume the globe model is what we live on, how could gravity decide what things is select to pull towards the center of the earth? We have to be living on a flat plane earth. That was a conclusion I came to as well as your supporting facts. I do not believe you have to be a scientist to figure this out. Thanks for listening. And uh, it was something bugging me. Hope this helps paint a simplistic view that you can also use in your YouTube videos if needed. End of that entire paragraph. Best regards, Thomas. Thanks, Thomas. Next time use paragraph breaks, but that's okay. We'll let it pass this time. See, this person has paragraph breaks. Question for you on satellites. Hey, Mark, closet flat earther for two years now. Uh, doesn't it sound like a, a, that flat earth is a combination between some uh, gay thing and Alcoholics Anonymous? Seriously. <laughs> it's like closet flat earther. You go to meeting, you go to meetups. Like, yeah, I'm Mark. Uh, hi, Mark. I've been a flat earther for three years now. You know, my journey started, you know, it, it does. Only it's a much happier version of AA. I bought a Garmin handheld GPS for hiking yesterday. The first thing you do when you turn it on is connect it to satellites. The screen even shows you what satellites you are picking up, how many, and even has a little satellite graphic. Now, I do not believe there are thousands of satellites flying around. I also know that for this global lot of work that smaller companies like Garmin Magellan cannot have people in on the lie or they if they did it would stop there and people at cable companies would also have to be in on it so my question is how is the individual setting up programming for the, for the specific gps unaware that there are no satellites yet still able to connect to land towers balloons underwater cables i know that i'm not making sense but like my gps says eight satellites in range shows the images of where they are above me <clears throat> what is actually going on and how does the programmer or the company program my GPS to show these satellites yet aware the GPS is programming is really just connecting to a tower? If you answer, I greatly appreciate it. It's one of the only things that date has stumped me. Cheers. Uh, he just signs it me. Uh, well, me. When it, in fact, uh, it's funny you mention that because I think it wasn't even a couple months ago I talked to a guy that set up cell towers. Forget about the GPS up. And he, he said that cell towers supposedly are supposed to connect to satellites, but he said that when he was tr being trained on how to set up cell towers, that they the, all the veterans say, no, 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 you just connect to other cell towers. And he goes, yeah, but they say satellites. You know, you're supposed to connect to like two satellites. He goes, no, 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 nobody connects to satellites. They always just connect to other towers. And that makes sense. Because remember, the GPS system that you're using, I, I think what I'm basically saying is those satellite, those little cool little satellite icons on your GPS aren't GPS at all. They're not satellites at all. They are some sort of tower that's you know, some distance away or bouncing off some sort of radar because when you go offshore with a plane, you can only go off so far and then the uh, latitude and longitude, they shut down. So that's my answer for now until I have more information. This one's called Compromised Media. Mark, just one more proof how easy it is to show the public only what they need to know. YouTube has taken steps to fix its platform in the wake of uh, each of these incidents, including the most recent. If you search for David Hogg on YouTube now, you're almost always presented with legitimate news clips, including the platform... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, in indicating the platform has actively changed its algorithm to de-promote conspiracies. And it's an article, yeah, that's from Jason. Yeah. I know YouTube's trying to adjust, although remember, they also want to make money. So they're going to have a big decision they're going to have to make eventually because YouTube makes them a lot of money because people watch more YouTube videos in a row than just about anything. I mean, because as you know, when people get into, into flat earth, they go to that rabbit hole and it's like two weeks, just flat earth, flat earth, flat earth, flat earth. You watch two weeks of it. I think that one guy that worked for YouTube said the average was like 20 flat earth videos in a row. Once you start going down the rabbit hole, you compare that to any other topic, uh, even even mainstream stuff. You're gonna listen. You're gonna watch 20 Taylor Swift videos in a row. Not knocking Taylor Swift; she's a musical talent and a treasure. But 
just saying. This one's called Happy Birthday Poem for My Sister. Hey, Mark, I was wondering if you would mirror this video I wrote for my sister's birthday. It has to be the flat earth. Uh, my sister woke me up and I thought it'd be uh, something fun for your channel to share. I'm going to call you for the first time ever and leave you a message. And of course, you, unless you, of course, answer the phone, uh, Jan, chances are I, I won't, Jason. Thanks, Jason. And I, I can't mirror everything. Uh, you know, I've already got, here's my, here's my problem. I'm already at 1,100 videos on my channel, and most of them are not mirrors. And so I'm, I'm trying to be really, really selective with my mirrors. Most of them have to be something that I found in the mainstream media or something that has to do with a conference or a meetup. Those are the ones I, I usually do. No offense, I'm, I'm sure your stuff's great, but I, 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 I would be clouding up my my channel even more even my playlist i've had to like limit it to i think 12 or 13 playlists and my liked videos for example is capped out they cap out at 5000 if you didn't already know that after 5000 it doesn't count anymore and which is a pain in the ass because if a video goes dead it doesn't tell you and you have to go in and anyway this one's called Flat Earth. High Market recently became fixated on the more believable theory that our Earth is flat after watching one of your documentaries with my dad, but wondering how evolution fits in when considering how dogs evolved from wolves. Is this a fact? Looking forward to hearing an answer, even if it's only a message back. Thank you, Molly. How evolution fits in. Uh, why would evolution have to fit in? Other than maybe you could do some genetic manipulation between civilizations. You know, alter a few things here and there. Not only uh, evolution, but do some terraforming. Mess with the continents. Put a crater in here and there. Mess around with the tectonics. I, evolution, it's just a minor part, in my, my opinion. If it's even real at all. You know, I mean, I do I believe that, that people can be changed genetically? Yes, of course I can. Uh, do I think it's a natural process that takes millions of years? Nope. No, I don't. This one's called Flat Earth High Street Shop. Yep, just saw this one. Searching the Flat Earth uh, Dundee and... Sorry, a Skype call just came in and I didn't have my sound turned off for whatever reason. This one's... Uh, I'm sorry. The, 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 there's a shop in... Oh, crap. Was it UK? Sorry, let me see if I can pull it up here real quick. It's from the eveningtelegraph.co.uk. Flat Earth Shop opens on City Street with window telling folk you have been lied to. Yep. Flat Earth Shop in the UK. So that that's an older story you guys know already. Sorry, I'm behind the kinds. This one's called Survival Guide. And Mark, please send me Survival Guide. That's from Brian Davidson. Yep, you got it. It's already been sent out to you. This one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Sarge. Thanks for the YouTube videos and the Flat Earth. So where to from here? Spread the word, hope for the best, and wait patiently? Or is there more that can be done? Uh, no, rinse and repeat. Spread the word, hope for the best, resist all science attacks. And uh, we, we're already there. I mean, a three-stage war. Create First stage, create a a huge amount of content with which is uh, easily accessible from the public. That part we did in spades. Uh, second is to get the mainstream media to create a vocabulary around it, good or bad, as long as they're talking about it, which has been done. And third, and why... Uh, hang on, i got to turn off my Skype sounds. Sorry, guys, I know you probably didn't hear the Skype sounds, but I'm going to mute and save and get rid of and let's, you know, we've still got time for a few more this one's called regarding the moon's light from the sun that you mentioned in a show hi mark i'm a flat earther for a few months i cannot stop listening to your shows i've observed myself the sun and the moon at the same time in the sky and i've wondered why sometimes the light on the moon does not seem to come from the sun in my example the sun was almost setting and the moon was high above us the light on the moon seemed to come as if the sun was higher but i finally figured out if it is due to perspective, as the sun is maybe at the same height as the moon, only the moon was above me and the sun was far away at the west and seemed much lower than me while the moon seemed much higher. Hope it helps. All the best, Dan. You know what? I will look at that after I'm done with this. This one's called, Have You Heard About the en.terraconvexa.com 
Oh, yeah, Brazil. Not sure if you've heard about this information. Can you please talk about this on your show? Thanks, Alma Ortega. Yes, as you know, the, a Brazilian team made a Flat Earth documentary. The experiments were pretty cool. I am not necessarily going to endorse it. I mean, the, 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 flat, the experiments were cool. And it was dubbed in English and a couple other languages. And uh, I think the original was Portuguese. Someone pointed that out to me. So, I, hey, we'll take any help we can get. This one's called Earth. Dear Mark, thank you very much for the super information you share, the time spent, and I love you put in Do Not Go Unnoticed. A big hug. We are really grateful to have people like you. May Father give you the strength and wisdom to go on informing the world. Regards from a sunny South Africa, Dirk Marianne van der Zayden. Hey, you're very welcome. This one's called Moon. Hi, are you there? Just seeing if this email is live. <laughs> Did I email? Yeah. And I wrote back. I said, yeah, absolutely. It's live. Lots of people. It's, I get that question actually all the time. People say, is this, is this email still working? Yes. I'm Sergeant 23 at Comcast.net. It is still working. This one's called, hello, Mark, listen to your YouTube. Please answer a few questions for me. Mark, if the earth is flat, please explain these questions. Number one, how do you explain the equator and how opposite poles like right now in the Northern, Northern hemisphere were in winter and the Southern hemisphere is in summer. Number two, I understand if the world round, if the world was round, how airplanes would actually actually put a little airplane icon, little emoji in there, would actually run into space as they continuously would have to follow the curve. Same with the submarine, per se, would come up out of the water if it continues straight. Question three, how do you explain night and day? Seeing the moon, etc. Very interesting. Thank you, Ron Woods. And by now, Ron would have already answered all these questions, but I'm reading it just because these are sort of questions. I'm not going to go through these again. You guys all know. This one's called Flat Earth Wow. Mark, thanks for all the information. I'm It really opened my eyes at what's going on this Flat Earth. Juan, I'm a Christian and a believer of Christ alone. Thanks again. Very welcome. And now we're seeing what one we can end on. Uh, this one's called The Shape of Water. Now the shape of water is in the news due to the Oscars. We should encourage all YouTube and other app platforms to name a video Shape of Water explaining water is level. A lot of potential hits. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, uh, yeah if, we're, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, the Academy Awards Best Picture this year was won by one of my favorite directors, Guillermo del Toro, a Mexican director who created, who who did um, The Shape of Water. And The Shape of Water, of course, was just an extension of one of his characters from the two Hellboy movies that he did, uh, Abraham Sapien, if I'm not mistaken. And it was a good movie, but the title helps us more than anything, Shape of Water. It's it's good. I don't know if it's going to get that much traction, though, because a lot of people are going, eh, I don't know if The Shape of Water should have won. It's okay. I mean, it helps. Uh, I don't I don't know if we necessarily have to get on that bandwagon because we are our own bandwagon. This one's called... Maybe we'll end on this one. Let's see. Uh, maybe not. The movie is... Yeah, let's read this one anyway. I think this might be the end. Uh, Mark, hey, thanks very much for... Oh, it's called FE Acronym and Underwater Video. Hey, Mark, thanks very much for taking the time to not only respond again, but to check out my song and video. I know my previous emails have leaned toward the lengthy side, uh, so I'll do my best to keep this one as succinct and to the point as possible. Our time is such a valuable, valuable resource, and you do such a wonderful work with yours. The fact that you set aside a bit of it to look at my own art is incredibly refreshing, and I genuinely do appreciate it. This movement has brought about the next stage of honest spiritual enlightenment that I've been searching for, and every day I look forward to uncovering more truths. It's very clear to me that the deception and manipulation of the human race is at the forefront of this evil agenda. The biggest question that I can find myself pondering lately is what will come next. I'd love to be given the opportunity to chat with you about it personally. Sometime, perhaps one of these weeks, I'll call into the strange world. As of now, my work sleep schedule has all but forced me to listen to the show's recording on Wednesday mornings. I'll have to see about forfeiting that routine and calling in, but for now, I'm just very curious to see how all this pans out. Awaiting your next show with a great anticipation. I hope we can finally get someone from NASA to do the right thing, step forward, and at least address this infinitely important issue. Until the next time, take care. God bless. And as you said, stay flat. Sincerely, Benjamin John. And you know what? I'm not going to end on that one. There's, I still got... Can I do one more? Yes, I can. Let's do a bonus one. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, let's do this one. 
This one's called Neophyte Needs Help. Hi, Mark. My name is Anthony. I was just listening to Strange World 139, my first, and I felt compelled to contact you. I'm fairly new to looking at Flat Earth. Seriously, for decades, I've regarded it as pure hogwash. In fact, 2017 has been a watershed year for me. In addition to the Earth and its nature, I've had other core beliefs shaken in the recent past. You probably heard the saying about our minds being open, um, <clears throat> being like concrete, all mixed up and set. Well, mine essentially was, but there's been a jackhammer in there lately. I see what you did there. I've watched several videos on YouTube that deal with some of the major aspects of flat versus round. My, my knowledge of traditional astronomy, aviation, space flight leaves me with many questions. I was hoping you could help me in answering some of these questions. Specifically, I'm looking for resources that provide more comprehensive scientific arguments for flat Earth. Also, it seems to me that one asks accepts the Earth is flat with a dome. Then the question of the existence of aliens is moot. Uh, they do not exist, but your conversation implied that that is not the case. Where can I go to learn more about this? Appreciate any help you can provide. We'll be listening to the future. Anthony, Anthony, you're just starting your journey, but that's okay. We'll, you'll get there eventually. Uh, you know what's end? Let's end with this one. This one's called Edmonton Conference. Mark, will you be there and doing some meet and greets? I'm dying to meet you, Veronica. Yes, I will. I will absolutely be at the Edmund, Edmonton conference. I have already, I don't think I bought my ticket yet because it's in August, but I will be buying it pretty soon. I'm going to be speaking at it and looking forward to a great time with all the other people there. And uh, as you know, I spent a year in Canada, uh, just just actually last year, and looking forward, but that was on the west side. So looking forward to, to being part of this event and should be a lot of fun. All right. On that note, let's call that one good. Thank you to everyone that has emailed me so far and everybody that I will read the emails in the future. If you want to send me your questions, send them to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat.